Okay, guys, this is uh, we're back here at the cabin again. Uh, we're actually putting in the baffles. I wanted to uh, explain to you all and show you a little bit about what this stuff looks like. This is called your event. Um, it uh, it has these knobs on it that holds it, you know, flush. The air is able to pass through here. These are made for 24 inch uh, spacings on the rafters or 16 inch spacings. Now, if you want to use them for 16, you simply just take them and you fold them. They will break in the middle like this, and then you just basically pull them apart, and you can lap them over, do whatever you need to do, and they will fit in 16 inch centers then. I'm having to uh, break them and put them apart because some of my rafters are not quite 24 inches apart because we're going to have beams and stuff in here and some of them are closer together so I'm kind of having to alter them a little bit to make them fit. But as you can see, that's basically what that does. This goes against the lathing on the metal up there so that air can pass through from the metal up through there so that when we insulate it, it won't stop off our air vents so that the roof will not breathe properly. So there's some taping I got to do on the seams and down at the bottom here where I put these pieces on um, right here. I got a tape right across there and right across here to stop some airflow in that, but it's fitting pretty tight like it is. I think we're going to be okay, but um, we're going to be doing this throughout the whole cabin. This will create an air barrier at the top so that the cool wind in the wintertime doesn't get down into the inside of the cabin and the roof breathes a lot more efficiently. Okay, what we have here, this is a Duravent panel. It's 22 and a half inches wide, four foot long. What I do is I take a panel and I take my tape measure. Now I have determined that these pieces need to be eight inches tall in order for them to work. So I, what I'll do is I'll start over here on the side and I'll mark my eight inches right here with my marker, but I'll also come down at the bottom and I'm going to mark an inch and a half right there. And I'll come back across. I make the eight inch mark is a reference line basically is what it is up there. This is going to be where we're going to cut this off at. Now we're going to be cutting this off at an inch and a half also. And we'll continue on across it. And I'm going to have to turn it around so I can reach the other side. In order to uh, finish getting the eight. And I'm going to mark the inch and a half down here again on that end. Now what we're going to do is I have a pair of just regular big garden scissors. I'm going to cut this. You have to be really careful with this stuff and this stuff will break. Because it really, it's really not that thick at all. It's very thin. Got it cut. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take those marks that I made here and I'm going to cut them like that. Okay, what we ended up with here now is we have a piece that looks just like this right here. This is going to sit on my top plate up there. This part right here is going to hang over. This is where I'm going to be stapling it at. Now, I've done learn it's wise to go ahead and come up here and cut a half inch nick in the top of every one of these outside corners. Now, we are ready to install this piece. Okay, now this piece is going to come up here, it's going to sit up 
I get where you can see it with the camera. It's going to sit just like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come back now with a staple gun. staple that. Now we're going to take our Gorilla Tape because what we want to do is make sure that it won't move and we're going to prevent the airflow. We're going to tear off a little piece of Gorilla Tape. Now I like to, I, I can reach around in here, though you may not be able to see it. But I can put my finger against the back side of this one so that I can hold it. If you don't, what happens is you'll push it in. And I've got that piece of tape in there. Then I'm going to tear another piece. This piece is going to go right here. That seals that. And then pieces where I nicked it in the corner, what that does, that allows that to flare and bend. Uh, you'll be able to see it. You might can see that one there, how it's flaring and bending. It makes it a whole lot simpler to install that. I'm going to go ahead. I got one more little small piece over here in this other corner. Now, this is the one that's a little aggravating over here in this corner. This gorilla tape, once it touches, it's there. All right, and now I'm going to tear a little bit longer piece. Now this is the tricky part because this will fold in on you if you're not careful. You want to stick it to the bottom first. And then you can put your finger in this part right here and pull it down. And that gives you something that holds it while you push and stick your tape to it. Because if you don't, you just push that. It'll just push that away from you and your tape you won't be able to get back and get it to stick to it. It'll be folded up on you. We got one more to go here. Stick it to the bottom first. Hold that, pull it down. Now, the purpose of this is that when we come in here and put our insulation, because this has no R factor to it whatsoever, we come in and put our insulation in here, this prevents the insulation from stopping the airflow underneath the metal. These channels right here lets air flow up through here from the soffit on the house all the way up through to the ridge up yonder where it can escape, where if we just stuffed insulation in it, Insulation would push out against the roof in there and it would prevent the air from flowing up through it and we would not get the proper ventilation that we needed on our roofs. So that's the purpose of this uh, that we're putting in here in our cabin. And I know a lot of people go, well, I thought you were just going to go in a cabin. It's like a lot of overkill. But guys, where we live at, it used to be 100 and something degrees down here. And we have an off-grid cabin with no cooling. So we're doing everything we can to prevent the heat from getting in here and letting it escape out, especially if we have a metal roof on it. And this is a cathedral ceiling. So we're going to finish up getting the rest of these in. And we'll all right, guys, we have finished putting up all of our styrofoam baffling in the whole cabin now. We had just enough to get it done all the way up into the loft and everywhere. And, you know, the funny thing about this stuff is, if we'd have had this stuff when I was a kid, we would have built anything with it because I was sitting here on break while I go eating my snack 
drinking me some water and I picked up a piece of it and it reminded me of when I was a kid. Used to, we went to the store, we bought these things in the store. It was the same exact stuff as this. And I took some scrap pieces and sit there and made this little airplane out of it. And it, it just brought back so many memories. I was like, wow, if we had something like this when I was a kid, we would have made all kinds of stuff. It's quite simple. Nothing fancy. And it flies. I mean, it's... I don't know if Ms. Wanda can get it on film, but we'll see if she can stay with it. I mean, it's still, it's a good little airplane. Kids would, kids would play with them like crazy if they had them. But you know what the truth of the matter is today? Kids today would just tear it up. It's styrofoam. If you, if you get rough with it, it'll just break. And when I was a kid, we played with things all day long. We'd never break them. But I'm pretty sure a kid today would just crush it in just a couple of minutes. And it'd be over with. But anyway, that's just one of little tidbits here about making toys with stuff. Um, but we're glad to get the uh, baffles up in the cabin here. We're hoping that now we'll be able to focus on getting some insulation, getting it insulated so that we can control the heat and temperature in here. We have windows coming next Friday, which I don't know what the date that'll be. Today is the 19th. Um, it's, this is Friday. It'll be the following Friday. Let me put it that way. Uh, we have windows coming to finish the cabin out. Uh, they've been on order now for three weeks. We're looking forward to getting them in and we'll show you where we get those. It's coming together. It's going to be a cabin here before long. And we're looking forward to being able to spend more time over here and enjoy the rest and relaxation that it will give us. And hopefully we're going to be able to get the porch roof on here within the next two or three weeks. And that will give us something that uh, will keep the rain off of the sides of the walls on the cabin on part of it. And it'll make it a lot more comfortable in here because it'll cool the air off that comes through the cabin here a little bit better. So thank you all for watching here on Patreon. And thank you for just staying with us and uh, following us along on this build as we build the candy corn cabin.